I'm, I'm going to try and give a different, uh, uh, usually I do the introduction of the school because I'm the director, but Sanya has come to at least two or three of these introductions, otherwise it's always the same story. So I'll just say uh, a more brief little thing, and then anyway, I'm sure uh, most of you have done the homework of seeing what the school is all about in the website, or and I'm sure you know already a lot about it. So I'll just say in a few words that, what is it, first of all? It's an international school for ecological, spiritual, and, and uh, psychological studies. And uh, we offer programs. And uh, for the uh, four past year, it's been a summer program. And this year, we are going to do a very exciting autumn winter program. So we can really dive into our in, in, in ourselves and more in introspections and in inquiry, because in the summer, there's very much a more vacation and hot vibe. So it was sometimes complicated both with the very physical work we were doing but also with the very spiritual and and strong inner work that we were doing sometimes with the heat we felt completely oh my god this is so much so here is when we really can come in ourselves and it's going to be very very special because also of the season and where are we we're in uh, Podere Fiorli and this is an amazing farmhouse in Tuscany really near Volterra and it's really a learning center for, for the transmission of life skills, but also to make you really a self-sufficient agent of change. You know? so, so we're all here became, becoming really change makers and, and really uh, co-creating a new paradigm together. So it's not, it, it starts with us. And this year, the, the, you will have seen that the title is Freedom and Responsibility Starts With You because you know, we're going to be talking about what it means to be sovereign of our bodies and what it means to be sovereign in a system or not in a system. And a lot of this, but before we do all of that, we really have to become free, free in ourselves, free beings, and really understand what freedom is about and what it, and what it means also to be really responsible. Because when you are free, you are responsible. And, uh, and that's when you really take responsibility, not just for your life, but even for, for, for the planet's life, because we are one, no? And this is, our school is really about uh, reconnecting with Earth and listening to this, this heartbeat, which is our own. And, and from there also working with people. And uh, when, when we started seeing that schools were becoming all online, which of course, in a way, has its purpose because like now look many of us are in different countries and we can connect but you know it's us using the tool rather than the tool using us so we really decided to do a school in which we can be together touch each other share emotions look at ourselves in the eyes and really be there for each other so this is really a journey together which is then going to bring us to another journey because we're not just going to change ourselves, but we're going to do something together when we come out of this school. And, and, and it's just the beginning, in fact. It's starting now. It will really be the whole journey together. But then we will, as you know, at the end, do a project which brings forth something as the group that we're going to be this year in the school. So this is a bit what it is. And, and we've come far with the with some friends who, who started this school because of previous projects that we did. I ran an eco-village for 20 years, a very successful eco-village. We learned so much. And in fact, some of our teachers, uh, for example, Bruno and Carol, we did a whole workshop for a whole year with them. And so we have the pleasure this year, they will be coming and teaching as well. So this is gonna start off very magical. And all these teachers that are now, some of you are meeting them uh, today here, but every time there's so many different teachers, they're all bringing really something incredible. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna pass the word to back to Fritz and then to Melanie who needs to leave us soon. And, and then we go from there and each of us will talk for two, three minutes so that there's a space for you also to, maybe you have some questions. So I'm also one of the teachers, but as, spoken quite well enough and so I, I'd like to yeah pass the word to someone else. Thank you Pushpa and it was a new introduction indeed so 
uh, uh, it's always like a meeting the school from different angles. <laughs> and um, so actually, uh, I'd like to pass to Melanie, as, as Pushpa said, and I'm teaching also together with Melanie. And before I do, maybe for you all, because uh, you've been in touch maybe with Angelica. So Angelica is a program director of the school and then Pushpa, Pushpa is a director of the school. And then there are a couple of teachers here in the call and, and, and I teach and I also run this call right now. So just so you know, like a little bit who is who. And uh, and then it's going to clarify more as we as we go along. So maybe over to you, Melanie, to introduce our course. Yes. Hello. Hi, I'm Melanie. It's very nice to meet everybody and see all these new faces on this call. Um, I'm originally from I'm based here in Amsterdam right now. Um, I'm originally from Australia. Um, although I left around about 20 years ago and since then I've been living um, in different places in Europe and in, and in the United States. Um, and um, my experience with yoga is that I was always interested in it and it was always kind of around with my upbringing. Um, and I was probably in my 20s when I really started practicing very regularly um, alongside working in an office. Um, and um, it was in, I think, 2006 when I did my actual teacher training and started um, teaching yoga. Um, and um, I've been teaching in both France and here in Amsterdam. And the first week of October, I was working in our um, teaching alongside each other that week. Um, and the theme for the for the week is it's a spiritual week. Um, and that's sort of what I just wanted to touch on quickly um, today. Um, and, and before I, I say that, I just wanted to say that I feel quite connected to the intention of the Transmission School because that has been my experience throughout my life is that I experienced um, wisdom and knowledge as transmissions as opposed to traditional forms of education, although I had that too, but I have had that experience through my life and I feel like um, it's a very powerful way of um, transmitting knowledge. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very excited, honoured um, to have been asked to teach uh, yoga uh, during the program. And um, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the, what the purpose of yoga is, like why do we actually do it? And I think that most people have heard of different forms of yoga. Maybe you've heard of Ashtanga yoga or Yayanga yoga or um, Vinyasa yoga. Um, but actually, these are all forms of Hatha yoga and they fall under uh, Raja yoga. There are four parts of yoga. There is Karma yoga, which is selfless service. Um, Bhakti, which is um, a devotional form of yoga which you mainly practice through um, music, ritual, prayer, that kind of thing. Um, and Raja Yoga, which is more about mind control. Um, it's more of a scientific approach. And Hatha Yoga is within that. And then within Hatha Yoga, we practice asanas, pranayama, mudras, um, and so forth. And that's what we will mostly practice during the week is a, a, is a sort of an integrated um, Hatha Yoga class. Um, and then the fourth path of yoga is Yanani yoga, which is more um, knowledge, philosophical, it's the study. Um, and right now I practice a lot of karma yoga. I'm in service to my family and my community is what it feels like mostly, um, which is also, as I said, a form of uh, a form of practicing yoga in in motion in your own daily life, I guess. Um, and this is how yoga was developed. First scholars say that it's been practiced for longer than that, but they found the first writings on yoga 5,000 years ago. Um, and these ancient yogis um, knew that the purpose or the goal of human existence was a spiritual one. But they also knew that um, the human body and mind experiences a natural decline and decay as it ages. So they developed this system which would ensure that it would sustain human health so that um, there would be continued spiritual investigations of your life. 
Um, so yoga itself is it's not a religion. Um, it's a complex system that's diverse enough to suit all of these kind of temperaments um, and that you can practice in all different forms. It's not necessarily about going to a yoga class every week or even just the study of it. It can be practiced in lots of different ways. Um, so I think I'd like to say that in its simplest form that yoga is um, through consistent yogic practice, your health improves, which means you're able to meditate longer or um, to uh, investigate yourself spiritually. Um, and that's that's essentially what the goal of, of all yoga practice is. And um, I myself don't spend a whole lot of time sitting in meditation anymore. I, I simply don't have the time as a, as a family person and a mother. Um, but I'm often in silence and in a meditative state of mind. And this is what you also get from yoga. Um, and then I think I think I've probably spoken for two or three minutes, but I, I just wanted to say a little bit about the, the course. Um, and I wanted to, to actually mention this quote from the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is like, um, it's what one of the most important scriptures and books on yoga. Um, it teaches how to live a spiritual life um, amongst a life of everyday stress and conflict and problems. It takes place on a battlefield um, and it's full of a lot of wisdom. And, and one of the things stood out to me that I wanted to share with you, which says a lot maybe about the, the course that Fritz and I will give or the, the week that we will share, which is yoga is a journey of the self through the self to the self. And this is the feeling that yoga gives me that keeps bringing me back to yoga, but we also hope to transmit to you during the week. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, and now I will go and do my karma yoga and serve my daughter dinner. So I have to say goodbye. <laughs> thank you, Melanie. Bye. Bye, Melanie. Thank you. Bye bye. <clears throat> Well, I just add that the title of that course is Form and Formlessness. And so to move from the world of form, which is the postures and, and so on, into the spiritual realm and back. So that's what, what we will actually explore. You know, what does it mean to be spiritual beyond the concept one maybe has of it? What is the actual experience, the day-to-day -day experience of spirituality? So... That's uh, maybe a little bit on, on, on that course. And then we can give you something completely different, um, but yet very uh, connected. And I think after um, the course that, or before the course that we teach, there's a mental week. And I think that is with, with you, Clay, um, on astrology. So I'd like to give over to you if, if you don't mind. Um, and it's, I think, you teaching together with, um, I'm not sure, but anyway, over to you. <laughs> yeah, um, hi, I'm Faye. Um, yes, I'm teaching together, indeed, the week before Melanie. Uh, I'm also from Down Under <laughs> and also live in Amsterdam. Uh, and I'm teaching with Zelda Hall, who's a new teacher. She's unfortunately couldn't be here tonight to introduce herself. I'll say a little bit at the end, maybe about her. Um, yes, I'm often asked as an astrologer, I'm an astrologer, have been for a very long time, and I'm often asked whether I believe in astrology, which I think is rather, rather a strange question for, for an astrologer. But I always say no, because I don't, because it's not a belief system. For me, that's like saying, do you believe in biology or do you believe in statistics or something? So astrology is a really good way at, at, of looking at how the world works for you know, how the cosmos works. So one of the things um, that astrology does, and it's also very old like yoga, is it, it looks at the sky for inspiration. And because we're part of a whole and part of that whole sky, it's as above and so below. So we look to what's happening in the sky to, to make sense of what's happening on the earth. So I'm not a predictive astrologer. I don't, I think we have choice. And I don't, um, I don't think you can predict. I think we do have some choice within some boundaries. Uh, but astrology is a really good way to look at this topic. And I love the topic. And I love what the Transmission School is doing. And I'm very delighted to be asked. So and I've just been there not very long ago running a, a course with Zelda, the new teacher. So I'm all fired up to go again. So 
Um, yeah, the course, uh, what I've called it is conform or rebel, because um, what I'd be looking at in, the, in my part of the week is looking at two what we call planetary archetypes. And one is um, Saturn, which is about uh, responsibility. And uh, I'll be looking at Saturn on different levels. First of all, on a, on a kind of global level. So what we all have to deal with. So looking at where Saturn is in the sky at the moment and what that means globally. And the other archetype I'll be looking at is Uranus, who's the, the planet of rebellion. So hence conform or rebel. Saturn's about conforming. He's about um, structures and um, bones and mountains and all kinds of things. And Uranus is about being rebellious or being authentically honest or being very straight. But he's a really a wake up call. So people often say that astrology has to do with Uranus. And um, the reason for that is that astrology is really, I think, a, a, a men it is a mental discipline in a way. What astrology is really good for is, is uh, using symbols to give you some insight into what, uh, into what's what's going on. So I've I've asked for people to give their birth data, their, where they're born and where they, you know the place they're born, the time they're born. Um, and um, the reason for that is I'll be looking at that on a, looking at Saturn and Uranus on a personal level. So. How do you experience responsibility? How do you, Saturn, how do you respect, uh, experience Uranus, your unique spark or your rebelliousness or your, your um, yeah, your ability to change and break through? And also looking at the cycle of Saturn and Uranus when they come together and how that works and what that's meant for particularly in corona times. Because during corona, we had an exact um, clash between Saturn and Uranus. So it was all about rules regulations versus people who didn't want to do any of that so it's a really good um really good example of how that works so what i hope you get from the week is is some insight into your own um personality and how you can take some responsibility um for for changing and for being the authentic you that you really are and i'll also look at the sun in your own horoscope to give you an idea of your vocation because i use the sun the heart about what you're supposed to do and what the world's waiting for you to do. So that's what uh, I hope you get out of the week as a whole load of insight about who you actually are, how you can rebel or how you can conform and how you can change the world and go out there and <laughs> be responsible and make it a better place. So um, I'll just say a little bit about Zelda. Zelda is also the same week and she's looking at soul purpose. So she'll be, she'll be much more about looking at dream work and body work and I'll be looking more at, at um, a kind of mental insight. So I think that's it. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. And we're kind of moving forward in the program because um, each building block is building on another. And the course before uh, Faye and Zelda is actually with you, Darko. Mm -hmm. And that's in the, in, the, in the physical week, so to say. So uh, because we, I, I'm not sure if you're aware, we've, we've structured the program into five bodies. So emotional the physical the mental the spiritual and the astral we've done that of course not to uh, separate different subjects but more to explain the whole and to make a program that's integrated and where each course feeds the next so that you you feel like you're actually developing in, 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 out of something rather than into something so um I, I would pass the word to you, Darko, if it's okay. Um, our, our chef in the building. <laughs> <clears throat> well, thank you. Um, well, I wouldn't call myself a chef uh, at this point. I don't know what to call myself anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm always stepping into unknown and, and giving myself very difficult tasks in my life. And the next one, and the, and the one that I'm doing right now is... I stepped into new new language, which I find very difficult to to cope with. So I'm intensively learning German. <laughs> so I was gonna I was gonna introduce myself in German, but um, I don't think it's a it's a place and time. So <laughs> my teachers ask me this, and I, I just like struggle with it all the time. But anyway, so it's good to be here, and uh, it's good to see you all uh, at least in this form. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in person. 
So uh, to get to the chase, uh, just a couple of things about myself. Uh, I got my master's in Chinese medicine. Um, I got my undergraduate degree in uh, holistic health. I work with nutrition. I had my, uh, for years, a private practice, which I get tired of it. I got tired of it because I, I was tired of listening to people's problems. So I wanted to do something else. And then I decided to dive into uh, hospitality industry and be became a self-made chef. Let's call it that way. And uh, and I do intensively uh, consult right now. And uh, I, I whispered to the other uh, people's ears what to do. <laughs> I'm trying to get paid for but uh, I always look forward to uh, interaction with the uh, students and uh, people who participate in my courses. Uh, I've done it for a long time. So what I'm going to be teaching is um, um, is the fundamentals of raw cuisine, which I've uh, uh, used in my life or, or lived that lifestyle for many years. I'm still doing it to a large extent. And uh, so what we're going to be doing in a course uh, without getting too much into philosophy, because, uh, you know, other people are going to be dwelling deeper into this, deeper into this. So we're going to uh, talk about not only we're not going to just prepare the food and make meals for everybody and and show how to do it. We're going to talk about things. So we're going to talk about how to implement uh, plant based lifestyle into your life. Um, we're going to talk about holistic health, uh, how to integrate different disciplines, because this is what I've done uh, with my clients. And I want to share part of this. It's not just about the food, even though food is the foundation for good health. I think it's all interconnected. So, you know, there is no separation between physical, energetic, uh, microbial, uh, mental and emotional or spiritual. So it's all intertwined. So I think it's all it's it's important to tap into this, and we're going to talk about how to use smartly food constituents, uh, how different organ systems correlate. Uh, we'll we'll tap into a little TCM and five elements of TCM and Ayurvedic approach to uh, to medicine and food. We'll talk about the detox, uh, emotions, and how to die young as late as possible. <laughs> so, okay we were naming your course darko how to you die young. <laughs> that's a great title of a course okay <laughs> so and how to you know how healthy food leads to healthy families because i have a little kid and i can see how she thrives with uh, with the good food with, with that block you know not talking about the other blocks so basically, that's the crux of the matter of what I'm going to be sharing with you guys. And of course, you know, little details about, uh, you know, plating and how colors and and uh, how colors are basically nutrients that we uh, that we have in food. So it's not just about uh, vitamins and minerals and proteins and carbohydrates and fats, but all the other sub subtleties of food that feeds us. So. That's in short. Thank you. Darko. Thank you. Yes. Hello, Hello. Grazia. Hello. Hello, how sorry I'm so late. I don't know if you can hear me, Hello, but you've Lord. been uh, freezing. Dar Darko, the we heard all of freezing it. freezing for me. No, yeah. Darko, we heard all of it. It was perfect. Thank you. So, uh, um, Actually, it's kind of beautiful today because it's like uh, it's not always happens this way that we can move through the program, but we can do it today. So it's quite kind of cool because before Darko, we have the emotional week um, and and it's Carol and Bruno teaching together with Pushpa. If I'm yeah, I think it's right. And that's the first week of the whole program. So you can you could now see kind of one. Uh, one arc of all the different bodies and it starts with uh, you Bruno and Carol maybe one of you wants to speak for a little bit okay uh, I start and I say sorry for my English so uh, it's probably that I will ask help uh, to Angelica for explain something that I'm unable to, to explain in English 
So, um, basically, uh, our, our contribution is uh, about uh, how to, to use the body uh, to express uh, and feel exactly what is it, what there is in the, in the field of consciousness, in, in the field uh, around us. I, I mean, we, uh, we are always exp expressing something with uh, our um, face expressions and uh, the movements of the body. But to, to be consapevole, come si dice, Angelica? Where? Where is that aware about it? It's uh, it's uh, 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 not so easy. So basically, we use uh, movements and, uh, for example, martial art movements, because I studied 40 years martial arts, different martial arts. But martial arts, uh, uh, the meaning of martial arts, it's not fighting system. It's not fighting techniques, but uh, a way to be uh, more um, able uh, to use your body to express your qualities in the life. Uh, if you are really a martial art uh, teacher or master, you don't use martial art in, in, as a fight, but as a way to express emotions and qualities in everyday life. Uh, we say usually that uh, the physical body is the border between inner world and outer world. Uh, so that uh, physical body is uh, the connection between inside emotions, ideals, uh, visions, and uh, everyday life, uh, uh, social connections. So uh, in the body and in the health of the body, we can understand uh, the way we are uh, using our energy. Uh, what for? Uh, only to make money or uh, for something else, something more spiritual, ecological, and so on. So um, usually uh, we use movements, not only martial art, of course, because uh, I studied for many years in an international school of movements, theater school of movements, not uh, um, based on basically based on movements, not non, on text, uh, like Shakespeare or so on. And so uh, we, can, uh, we can play all these different kinds of movements to uh, reach uh, something inside, our, inside of us by movements and use it to move ourselves in the life. This is a, a very short... Um, uh, resume, riassunto, come si dice, Angelica? Summary. Yes, yeah, summary, thank you, uh, about, uh, about uh, our program. I'm a teacher in uh, um, um, transpersonal psychology, so that we use uh, transpersonal psychology, which, which is a, a, sum, um, a summary of the experiences of uh, Jung, uh, Asajoli and other masters in psychology, uh, which is a, a kind of um, trip in uh, very ancient traditions like Taoism, Buddhism, uh, Kabbalah, and whatever, uh, to, to find a, a common sense in all ancient tradition, traditions and to translate this uh, uh, common sense, common meaning in, uh, in a way that uh, can be expressed and, and uh, um, pushed in everyday life now for us, uh, like a translation, you know? Uh, for example, Taoist tradition is very ancient, very mysterious, but uh, the, the rules that are in, uh, 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 in those traditions are rules which are basically universal. And you can find the same meanings and the same tools also in other different traditions. So uh, we can put uh, this in simple words because main, <laughs> mainly we use movements and not words for our courses. And so uh, 
I think I will have a, a different approach uh, that in this moment, <laughs> because the difficult of uh, express myself in English, <laughs> uh, I stop here and I give to Carol and uh, Pushpa to to go on with uh, with my disaster <laughs> in uh, expressing myself. Thank yeah. you. No, it was great. Thank you, Bruno. Carol, vuoi dire qualcosa anche in italiano? I, I, io sì, sì. Sorry, but I start in, in Italian because uh, <laughs> in the uh, other side will be a little bit too adventure. <laughs> so I understand a lot, but my English is a little bit uh, uh, sì, complicato. Eh, aggiungo che um, l'esperienza è essere consapevoli dell'energia che incarniamo Angelica, vai te. So the experience is to be aware of the energy that we are embodying. Eh, per capire ciò nel quale noi ci identifichiamo e in realtà è tutto il potenziale che aspetta di essere incarnato. In order to understand all the potential that is waiting to be embodied. E con il lavoro di gruppo corporeo eh, eh, molto spesso noi, eh, il gruppo diventa testimone di quella parte che noi non ci riconosciamo. And by being in a group context, very often the group becomes uh, the witness of the part of us that we are not understanding and recognizing yet. Quindi diventa un lavoro uh, reciproco e ogni volta è un mondo diverso perché ogni gruppo ha una sua personalità, ogni gruppo incarna l'energia di cui ha bisogno. So it's a, it's, a, it's a reciprocal work and every time it's a different kind of work because every group embodies what the parts of the group need in that moment. E diventa un atto creativo collettivo nel quale le persone incontrano la forma che sono abituate a incarnare, la forma che eh, e sono in grado di invece sviluppare e diventano poi archetipi. So in, a, in an artistic way, then all the parts of the group come to uh, embody the, the form that they are supposed to, and they also become uh, different archetypes. Uh, I bambini quando giocano incarnano archetipi. For example, children, when, when are playing, they are embodying archetypes. E per loro è immediato. And for them it's just sudden, it's immediate. Ed è fantastico vedere con quale facilità quando il corpo assume la propria responsabilità di essere visto. And it's amazing to notice how, how, how the body takes the, the, the responsibility of embodying a certain kind of movement in order to be looked at, but in order to be seen. Fa l'esperienza del proprio potere personale, non esercitato sugli altri, ma della pienezza di far parte di una tribù e di essere visto per quello che eh, desidera, vuole o è in quel momento. And in that moment, for example, with children, the body takes the complete ownership of uh, its own uh, pa personal power um, that, that belongs fully to it in the moment. E quindi spesso c'è il discorso di uh, essere responsabili di ciò che io voglio incarnare, questo mi dà una profonda libertà. And so the, the fact that one is responsible to what he or she wants to embody, then this gives a, a sudden kind of freedom, liberation. E quindi man mano la frequenza si alza e la tribù, noi la chiamiamo così, il gruppo che lavora si sente trasformare perché si diventa, si fa lo switch consapevole tra noi persone e noi mitologia. Mm. So through this process of embodiment of one own personal power, uh, then the group slowly uh, takes more and more power and there's that transformation, there's a, there a switch happening. Per cui è, è, un, è un viaggio, un viaggio trasformativo uh, che riguarda la qualità di quello che siamo in grado di scoprire di essere. 
So it's a transformative journey that uh, deals with the quality of what we are able to express and uh, be. Grazie Angelica. È, è, da fare è più semplice, da spiegare è più complicato. About it. So there's gonna be a lot of movement in this course. That's, uh, that's yeah, thank you. thank you, Carol. And that same week, I'm gonna be also teaching with them. So we're gonna be journeying so strongly, so powerfully inside. And as I told you, I've done, I was lucky to do this experience with Bruno and Carol. I think today I am who I am, even thanks to this incredible journey with them. And so that week we will also need to eat. <laughs> and as they say that we are also what we eat, this is what we will be bringing also. My course is called Food for Life. So we will really be talking about food and what is food to us and, and uh, how we can become playful with it, how we can recognize our food and really have a different uh, a relationship with it and and it's also uh, less uh, talking about but a lot of being in the kitchen together when we have formed this tribe we will enjoy this course also of cooking together incredible food which will have also a very different energy because it's been done by us in this journey so I leave it like that because we'll have Mariana who's going to present what she is bringing. And also we wanted to give a little space if anyone has a few questions. But as you know, you can always get back to us also any other time. Huh? So pass the word, Mariana, let's, you go yeah. ahead. And, and just one thing, just so you're aware of, the, of where Mariana comes or where you come in the program, Mariana, it's uh, so Carol and uh, Bruno and Pushpa are the first week. And now we kind of move to the end of the whole arc that you just heard about. And that will be the land week because you need also, a, we all need a week to digest, to integrate and to create, be creative and play and, and have fun outside, so to say. So um, Mariana is going to be a It's, I can't hear you. Nature week. So, Mariana, maybe you can share all Fritz, the And uh, over to Mariana. You don't need to hear me. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Mariana. I'm an artist and I live not so far from Purely in Tuscany. And um, I, when I, I, I went to live here some years ago, I discovered that uh, uh, close uh, from my village, uh, there is a place where was born uh, um, an, a famous artist was born 600 years ago, and his name is uh, Cennino Cennini. And so I speak to you about uh, this artist that is not famous for his. Uh, um, uh, artworks, but is famous for a book, because my course, my class is about uh, how to prepare colors with uh, nature, how to prepare tools for art with uh, nature. So this book, the book of art, contain a lot of uh, ancient recipes to prepare colors, and uh, I want to transmit you this uh, these things because. Uh, I think it's beautiful that uh, we can uh, take from nature everything we need. So um, we will prepare colors with plants. We will collect plants around uh, Fiorli and uh, we, we can take uh, half minerals to create uh, um, tempera colors, water colors uh, and oil colors. And uh, we, we can also um, create uh, other uh, things to paint, like uh, brushes and nails and everything. So you you can stay in nature all the time and uh, collect what you need, discover discover uh, a lot of uh, dying plants, 
uh, and uh, prepare in a very simple way, in a very easy way, what you need to express your creativity. So we, we will spend together this week and uh, I am very happy to meet you. And uh, I, I'm here if you want to ask me something about. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you. Beautiful. And, uh, and that kind of closes the arc, so to say, because you've heard all the different courses and then at the end, the land week and nature or with nature. Um, and then we have, we go through this, this kind of arc once with um, physical, emotional, spiritual, astral, and so on. And then there's a land week, there's an integration week, and then we go again, which really means to go deeper into, in, into each of these subjects and into ourselves. And uh, the first arc of the program is really about an inner exploration. And then the second arc of the program is really to, to bring it out to translate it into maybe a project that you want to do yourself, a project that we're going to do together and, and how to bring this into the world.